This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at writing formulas of ionic compounds. So next we look at how to determine the formula of an ionic compound. First, you need to know the charges on the ions, that's the cation and anion, in the compound. The second point is that ionic compounds are neutral, which means they have no overall charge, so you need to balance out the positive and negative charges on the cation and anion. And thirdly, formulas need to be written using subscripts and brackets where necessary. In the first examples that we look at, the ions have charges of equal magnitudes but opposite signs. These are sodium iodide, lithium chloride, calcium sulfide and magnesium oxide. So if we start with sodium iodide, which is composed of sodium ions and iodide ions. The sodium ion has a one plus charge and the iodide ion has a one negative charge. To make the ionic compound neutral, we need one of each type of ion, therefore the formula is NaI. This tells us the ratio of ions in a formula unit is one to one. Our next example is lithium chloride, which is composed of lithium ions and chloride ions. Lithium ions have a one plus charge and chloride ions have a one negative charge. To make a neutral compound, we need one of each type of ion, therefore the formula is LiCl. This tells us the ratio of lithium ions to chloride ions in a formula unit is one to one. The next example is calcium sulfide, which is composed of calcium two plus ions and sulfide two negative ions. To make a neutral ionic compound, we need one of each ion, therefore the formula is CAS. So in a formula unit, the ratio of ions is one to one. Our next example is magnesium oxide, which is composed of magnesium two plus ions and oxide two negative ions. To make a neutral ionic compound, we need one of each ion, therefore the formula is MgO. In all of these examples we've looked at so far, the ratio of ions in a formula unit is one to one. This is because the ions have charges of equal magnitudes but opposite signs. So in the next examples that we look at, the ratio of cations to anions is not one to one. In these examples, the ions have charges of different magnitudes and opposite signs. Our first example is lithium oxide. Lithium oxide is composed of lithium ions which have a one plus charge and oxide ions which have a two negative charge. To determine the formula of lithium oxide, we're going to use the crossover method. In the crossover method, you take the numerical charge on the cation and write it as a subscript for the anion. Next, we take the numerical value of the anion and write it as a subscript for the cation. So the one goes from the lithium to the oxygen and the two goes from the oxygen to the lithium. We then write it as a formula, which is Li2O. An important point to note is that if the subscript is one, we do not include it in the final formula. This is because it's assumed if there's no subscript, it's already going to be a one. So from this, we can determine that a formula unit of lithium oxide has a ratio of lithium ions to oxide ions of two to one. This two to one ratio is necessary to make lithium oxide an overall neutral compound. The next example we'll look at is calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is composed of calcium ions and chloride ions. So we take the two from the cation and write it as a subscript for the anion. And the one for the anion is written as a subscript for the cation. We then write it as a formula, which is CaCl2. Just like in our previous example, if we have a subscript of one, we don't write it in the final formula. So the ratio of calcium to chloride ions in a formula unit is one to two. Our next example is magnesium nitride. Magnesium nitride is composed of magnesium ions and nitride ions. So using the crossover technique, we take the two from the magnesium and write it as a subscript for the nitrogen. And the three from the nitrogen becomes a subscript for the magnesium. 
We then write it as a formula which is mg3n2. This tells us that in a formula unit we have a ratio of mg2 plus to n3 negative ions of 3 to 2. Remember that this ratio is necessary to make magnesium nitride a neutral compound. Our next example is aluminium bromide which is composed of aluminium ions and bromide ions. So using the crossover technique we take the 3 from the aluminium and write it as a subscript for the bromine and the 1 for the bromine becomes a subscript for the aluminium. We then write it as a formula which is AlBr3 and the ratio of aluminium ions to bromide ions in a formula unit is 1 to 3. Next we look at examples of ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Our first example is zinc sulfate which is composed of zinc ions and sulfate ions. Because the charge on the ions is equal but opposite, we need one of each ion in a formula unit to make the compound neutral. Therefore the formula of zinc sulfate is ZnSO4. So in a formula unit the ratio of zinc ions to sulfate ions is 1 to 1. Next we have aluminium phosphate which is composed of aluminium ions and phosphate ions. Once again we can see that the charges on the ions are equal but opposite. So in a formula unit we need one of each type of ion to make the compound neutral. Therefore the formula is AlPO4. So the ratio of aluminium ions to phosphate ions in a formula unit is 1 to 1. In the next examples we look at the ratio of ions is not 1 to 1. So starting with iron 2 nitrate which is composed of iron 2 plus ions and nitrate ions. So using the crossover technique we take the 2 from the iron and write it as a subscript for the nitrate ion. And we take the 1 from the nitrate ion and write it as a subscript for the iron. We then write it as a formula which is FeNO32. Note that when writing the formula we need to use brackets around the NO3 part of the formula. This tells us that in a formula unit we have a ratio of Fe2 plus to NO3 negative ions of 1 to 2. Next is ammonium carbonate which is composed of ammonium ions and carbonate ions. So we'll use the crossover technique and we'll take the 2 from the carbonate ion and write it as a subscript for the ammonium ion. Once again note the use of brackets. We then write it as a formula which is NH42CO3. So in a formula unit the ratio of ammonium ions to carbonate ions is 2 to 1. So next we'll move on to our last two examples. Aluminium nitrate is composed of aluminium ions and nitrate ions. So we'll take the 3 from the aluminium ion and write it as a subscript for the nitrate ion. We'll also take the 1 from the nitrate ion and write it as a subscript for the aluminium. We then write it as a formula which is AlNO33 which tells us the ratio of aluminium ions to nitrate ions in a formula unit is 1 to 3. And our last example is zinc phosphate which is composed of zinc ions and phosphate ions. So we take the 2 from the zinc and write it as a subscript for the phosphate ion. And we take the 3 from the phosphate ion and write it as a subscript for the zinc. We then write it as a formula which is ZN3PO42. Once again note the use of brackets in both of these examples. The ratio of zinc ions to phosphate ions in a formula unit is 3 to 2.